Hi folks, let's do some revision for physics. Now in this case, we are dealing with pressure. Um, in fact, pressure is considered one of the easier topics within physics. Um, it is rather standalone. So all students should try their best to get good marks for questions regarding pressure. So without further ado, let's start. Now, pressure has only a few possible scenarios. Let's go through all of them. Now, one of the things that you should look out for is uh, which scenario are you uh, handling? So for example, are you working on solids? Now, solids will be very straightforward. Let's say we have <coughs> uh, an object that exerts a weight now your job is to find out what is the area of contact for this particular object that the weight is exerted on so in this case it would be the uh, bottom area and therefore for such cases you simply use your formula for pressure p equals to force over area and of course in this case your force is the weight of the object um i am very particular about units and so should you because if you use the wrong units you will end up with the wrong answer simple as that Therefore, it pays to remember what units you are looking at. Now, most of the time, we will use SI units. So for pressure, the SI unit is Pascal, force, Newton, similarly for weight, and for area, hopefully none of you have forgotten about it. Uh, area, the SI unit for area is square meter rather than square centimeters or some other uh, units so once you get all your units right all your units are in S, uh, SI units and yeah naturally your answer will be correct so that that is the formula regarding solids but as we shall see later there are scenarios in which uh, solids can be mixed with perhaps liquids so just keep that in mind. Now let's go on to the second scenario in which gases are involved. Now for this case, it depends on again what, what kind of situation you are in. If you are looking at the small object, like let's say a balloon, then the pressure exerts equally throughout the balloon or throughout the interior of the balloon so um, for such small objects there is practically no difference in the pressure within the balloon so there is only a single value so obviously this uh, units for this pressure will be in Pascal right similarly if we are talking about let's say a car tire well this is still considered a small object so therefore the pressure inside is considered uniform throughout throughout the car tire so the pressure within the car tire is only a single value but there are of course cases in which we are talking about a very huge amount of gas and I suppose the largest that we can imagine will be the entire atmosphere now this atmospheric column is huge is um, well depending on uh, your literature it can stretch all the way up to a few hundred kilometers so for this kind of scale then the the altitude 
at which you measure the pressure becomes important. Um, we'll go into this a, a bit more in the next part about liquids. All right. Now, liquids is a very common topic that you will probably be asked in your questions. And the formula, there's only one formula to actually remember. Your pressure equals to H rho G. And again, let me remind you about the units. Pressure is always in Pascal as an SI unit. Height, meters, density. Now, this is where some students will get it wrong. Uh, the SI units for density are actually kilogram per cubic meter rather than gram per cubic centimeters. All right, so do get this right. As I said earlier, if you don't, you will get a, not, a wrong answer. Uh, G will be the gravitational field strength. Uh, well, nothing new here. For O levels, you are supposed to use the value of 10 newtons per kg. I think at this point, I would like to stress that your density is a very important factor because this will affect the height of that liquid um, for a given pressure. All right. So, um, okay. So how do we look at the, this this kind of uh, questions? Now, again, one popular scenario would be, let's say you have a water column, perhaps in a sea or in a river, a pond, and you are supposed to calculate the depth, or sorry, calculate the pressure at a certain depth. So this depth will be equivalent to your height. Right, and of course, you're supposed to know the density for seawater, uh, perhaps one point something. Okay, oh, even I got the mistake here. All right, for density, make sure you're using SI units, so it would be in kg per cubic meters. So that would be in a thousand, a thousand or more for water. So at this point, the pressure is simply P equals to H rho G. But one thing perhaps you want, you would want to be careful with is if you are asked about the true pressure at the same point or what we call absolute pressure is actually more than just h rho g now the reason is you also have atmospheric pressure acting on the surface of the sea so if you want to calculate the absolute pressure you will have to add in the atmospheric pressure as well. Now, of course, it goes without saying your atmospheric pressure should be in Pascal. All right, so a typical value for atmospheric pressure or at least a conventional value for atmospheric, atmospheric pressure will be somewhat like this, 101.325. Okay, so it's about 100,000 Pascals. Now, obviously, you do not need to remember this number. It will be the atmospheric pressure will be given to you in the question. Just make sure that the units are in Pascals. Now, let's go a bit further with our earlier formula. Pressure equals to H rho G. Well, actually, this formula applies to fluids in general, and that would include gases too. So as I mentioned earlier, if you're talking about a huge body of gas, like for example, the atmosphere, then this formula actually can be applied. 
So in this case, you are supposed to have a value for your uh, thickness or the height of your air column that you're interested in. And a particular point, a particular uh, pressure at a certain altitude. And well, yes, in a pinch, you can apply this formula. Uh, but the, of course, in, in practical terms, the limitation will be your density. Because in reality, as you go further up in the atmosphere, the density of air actually decreases. So this will make a uh, calculation of the pressure using just this formula alone a bit um, off the mark. But what you ought to know as a student taking the O-levels is at the higher up you go, pressure, atmospheric pressure decreases. So let me use the proper term as altitude increases, atmospheric pressure decreases. And I suppose it's not so difficult to visualize that because as you go higher up, you have less and less air above you. And of course, the air is getting thinner too. So, uh, well, it's not surprising that the atmospheric pressure decreases the further up you go. Now, let us go on. Now, another common scenario that you are likely to face is a device called the barometer. Now, this device simply uh, measures the atmospheric pressure uh, and most of the time for all levels it would look something like this even though in real life the device would be quite different. So you would have a uh, tube, inverted tube, typically filled with mercury lying in a pool of mercury or container of mercury and the important point is this height here this height of mercury let's call it h now basically there is atmospheric pressure pressing down on this surface of this pool of mercury and in fact, this atmospheric pressure or this uh, due to the weight of the air above you is strong enough to actually hold a column of mercury for a certain height. Now, just keep in mind, it doesn't matter what the width or the diameter of this tube is, you can have a, a really big tube. And the height of this mercury column will still be the same. So it is the height that tells you the pressure. And yeah, as I said, the height is still the same, no matter how wide or how 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 uh, big the diameter or small the diameter of this tube is. Now, and uh, by convention the height of this mercury would be about 760 mm. So that is a conventional atmospheric pressure. Uh, one other thing, the interior or the head space above your mercury is vacuum. All right, so that the um, there's no other external or no other pressures acting on this column of mercury. Now keep in mind that why do we use mercury? Well, first it happens to be a liquid, which makes it suitable for use in a barometer. Well, second important reason is its density is rather high. And of course, there's no need for you to remember this value. So, well, I think most of us, including me, uh, we remembered it by grams per ml or grams per cubic centimeters. So again, a reminder, 
make sure you convert it to SI units multiplied by 1000 you get kg per cubic meter right so this uh, to me it is a handy way to convert your density from grams per cubic centimeters to kg per cubic meter you simply multiply by 1000 so um yep so these two reasons basically make mercury suitable uh the implication is this due to the high density of this particular liquid your height is only 76 cm now i repeat the height of mercury column for a typical atmospheric pressure is only 760 cm oh sorry 760 mm now if you are using another liquid like for example water now water has a much smaller density so it's about a thousand kg per cubic meter in SI units so if you try calculating an equivalent height for water which can support the atmospheric pressure uh, okay this one I will not display my I will not show you the calculations you can try it yourself you are looking at about 10.3 meters of a column of water now imagine 10.3 meters of apparatus is well not a joke imagine this column is going to be 10.3 meters high you are going to have a lot of technical issues just to uh, set up this apparatus right 10.3 meters high if you are using water as your fluid of choice in the barometer And it goes without saying, if I'm going to leave this barometer higher up in the atmosphere, let's say you bring this barometer up along in an aeroplane, provided you can survive that, uh, uh, that, that, that low pressure, it goes without saying your height is going to be much lower here. Okay, so in this case, your height of mercury is definitely lower than the original height at ground level now conversely if you go uh, to somewhere deep in the ground if it's safe to do so then you again bring along your barometer you would expect your atmospheric pressure to be higher and of course that also means your height of mercury is going to be uh, greater too so just keep this in mind barometer is a commonly used device at least for O level questions make sure you're familiar with this usage now the other device which is commonly seen in O level questions will be what we call the manometer Now, this device measures the pressure of a gas. So, well, for example, let's say you have a balloon here and you attach it to a manometer. It would look something like this. It's a basically a U-shaped device, or at least that is how it appears in your O-level questions. So, you would have, uh, again, a liquid inside. probably mercury now now again the same thing is this there's a certain pressure here and this pressure here is due to your gas now as I said earlier for a small volume of gas the pressure is the same <coughs> throughout as long as the gas is connected so whether it's within this balloon and it, all the way here the pressure is the same now similarly the important factor to note will be the height difference between 
the mercury on the left arm and the mercury on the right arm. So therefore, my gas pressure can be calculated. You are right, using your pressure formula for liquids. As I said, this liquid, this this uh, substance inside here is typically a liquid and uh, typically mercury. So apply the formula, make sure you're using SI units. And you almost get your answer for the pressure of the gas. But if we want to find the absolute, absolute or the true pressure of this gas. Now, similarly, don't forget on the right arm is open to the air and that also means atmo atmospheric pressure is acting on the right hand side so in other words your pressure the pressure of the gas is strong enough to support both a certain height of mercury H as well as the atmospheric pressure Again, make sure if you add in atmospheric pressure, it's in Pascal. So, well, personally, I would say that a manometer is a combination, a system that combines a liquid and a gas. So the gas is on your left hand side, which is what you want to measure. And of course, the liquid will be this mercury within the manometer itself. Now, keep in mind that there's also another, there could be another possibility. So, for example, I can have, uh, well, your manometer is connected to something there on the left. All right, same thing. On the right hand side is open to the atmosphere so therefore atmospheric pressure is acting on the right hand side and of course in this case well there's a certain pressure here but just that you you is unknown you don't know what it is let me put it as unk unknown pressure now the interesting part is your liquid in the manometer looks like this Okay, so make sure this part is all sealed up. Now, the liquid in your manometer looks like this. Now, again, similarly, we are interested in the height difference between the left-hand side and the right-hand side of the manometer. But contrast this with my example on the left. In, on the left here, the height in the right arm is greater than the height of the liquid in the left arm whereas in this case the left arm actually has a greater height compared to the right arm so what does that mean now it means that my pressure or this unknown pressure is actually a partial vacuum And this means that my unknown pressure is actually less than atmospheric pressure. So much so that my atmospheric pressure can actually push your mercury up the left hand side of the manometer. Right, so how do I want to find my pressure in this case? Well, um, not surprisingly, I need to make use of this height difference here, H. So for this case, I want to calculate my absolute unknown pressure. As I said, the unknown pressure is lower than atmospheric pressure, so I get my atmospher atmospheric pressure minus of my H rho G. Alright, again, 
this height is what I've already drawn. Rho is of course whatever fluid that you're using here. So typically it's mercury density, 13,600 kg per cubic meter and G is always G, which for O level is 10. Right, so just take note of this possible scenario, not common, um, well, but something that you ought to be aware of. Now, and the last scenario, which is a very common question, is basically a system that incorporates a solid components and a liquid. Now, I will call this the transmission of pressure. And the I would say the typical system is in the form of a, a hydraulic jack or a piston. Well, yes, this kind of looks like a manometer, but it's not a manometer here. Uh, sometimes they call it a hydraulic jack. So I have on the left hand side, I have a certain uh, piston here or certain support, right hand side another support. Now there is a liquid. Now of course in real life when you're talking about hydraulic jack, nobody will be using mercury. Uh, keep in mind that mercury is very toxic is uh, very hazardous to handle so if possible don't use mercury well they will be using uh, hydraulic fluid and organic compound uh, but of course there's no need to go into those details so let's say you have a liquid here and basically this system is an equilibrium okay so probably you have a certain uh, weight here or a certain force here. Now, this force is applied downwards. So basically, there's a transmission of pressure from left hand side to your right hand side. And there's a force transmitted upwards. Let's call this F2. And typically, this force F2 is strong enough to support a, probably a solid object of a certain weight. And since the system is at equilibrium, the weight of this object is the same as F2. Now what you ought to know is the pressure at this point is the same as the pressure at this point P1 equals to P2 if they are at the same height in the hydraulic system. Now typically they will also tell you the cross-sectional area of this uh, piston here or this support here so let's call this cross-sectional area A1 on the right hand side cross-sectional area is A2 So I can start to form my equation. As I said earlier, P1 equals to P2. Now, even though, um, well, in this particular case, even though there's a liquid involved, we will not be using H rho G. So instead, we will be using the formula for solids, a solid system. So P1 or pressure 1 equals to F1 over A1. P2 equals to F2 over A2. And if I rewrite this equation over here, F2 actually equals to A2 over A1 times F1. Now, what is important is this. A2 is typically greater, much greater than A1. So maybe I write it out. A2 is greater than A1. That also means A2 over A1 is greater than 1. 
And what this tells you is F2 is greater than F1. In other words, just by exerting a small force here, F1, you actually produce a much larger force F2 on the right hand side. And of course, this large force can support a much uh, heavy weight, like for example, the weight of a car. The trick, the main trick will be here. Your cross-sectional area of the piston A2 is much greater than the cross-sectional area of the piston A1. That is the trick that allows you to magnify your force, giving rise to a much larger F2 compared to F1. Alright, I believe this I've come to the end of my of this uh, presentation about pressure. Now obviously you have to go out and try different kinds of questions to find out the various possibilities to apply uh, these various formulas. Now the formulas are not a lot, just this few. Uh, it's the ability to apply them that, that that is important for you as a student. Uh, well lastly if you are interested to find out more about iMetal Learning Center, our enrichment and tuition programs, you can just visit our website as given here. Alright, goodbye and good luck.